There's been a lot of talk about Sapphire lately, specifically around watches. This Apple Watch Ultra is supposed to be Sapphire, this Galaxy Watch 5 is supposed to be Sapphire, and this Garmin Phoenix 7 is supposed to have Sapphire, along with some solar panels. I'm pretty excited about this one. Sapphire is an extremely premium and very valuable man-made material with a hardness level up near diamonds. To make sapphire, ingredients are subject to extreme heat for weeks to create a large block called a boule, which is then cut up or cored and sliced to make watch faces or cell phone screens. It's a super interesting process. As you probably know, we see smartphone screens scratching at a level six with deeper grooves at a level seven. But sapphire, sapphire scratches at a level eight or nine. It's exponentially harder than glass on the most scale of hardness. We've seen sapphire used quite a bit with the Tissot watches that we've tested in the past, as well as on the displays of Kyocera's lineup of ultra rugged smartphones. Apple, however, ever since the iPhone 5 has claimed that they're using sapphire. And while it is technically true, it's a subpar grade of sapphire that still gets marked up at a level six. Apple even used their impure sapphire on the $1,300 Apple Watch Series 3, so I have some major doubts about the quality of sapphire here on the Apple Watch Ultra. Which is kind of embarrassing. If other companies can get their hands on the real stuff, Apple, as one of the most valuable companies in the world, should be able to as well. So today we're gonna see how well that Sapphire on the Apple Watch Ultra holds up and compare it to Samsung Sapphire and Garmin Sapphire. And hopefully, fingers crossed, everyone's Sapphire is legit. And speaking of protection, huge thanks to Rhino Shield for sponsoring this video. Rhino Shield is known for creating durable and customizable phone cases and accessories. You can bling out a personalized one-of-a-kind case of your own or pick from a plethora of other unique designs. From NASA, the NBA, PewDiePie, or you know, you can just keep it simple with some solid color MagSafe friendly cases, which all come with lifetime warranties. Personally, I'm a big fan of the 100% recycled paper packaging. Rhino Shield is having their biggest sale of the year with all products up to 60% off and you can take an additional 10% off of that using code JERRYRIG with the link down in the description. Whether you need a more solid handle on your device with a pop-out Grip Max or a Grip Mini, or you just want 360 degree protection for your own phone or as a gift for someone else, the link is down in the description. Unfortunately, Rhino Shield did not send me any cases from their NASA collection, but if you need a case, you should definitely scroll through those because there's some real winners. Huge thanks to Rhino Shield for sponsoring this video. And now it's time to see if all of these companies are telling the truth about their Sapphire. Well, let's get started. In our journey today to find out if Apple, Samsung, and Garmin are using real Sapphire, we have a few tools. The first of which is our diamond selector tool, which tests the thermal conductivity of gemstones to see if they're real or not. Diamonds and sapphire are five times more thermally conductive than copper. Can you imagine a sapphire frying pan? It might cost a million bucks, but it would cook your eggs so fast. The thermal conductivity means that the glass lens of the Pixel 7 Pro will not register on our tool, but the sapphire camera lens of the iPhone 14 will. My wife's cubic zirconium ring won't thermally register, but her real diamond will. The glass fossil won't register, but the extra hard and premium sapphire crystal Tiso watch face will. And of course, if we take our massive block of sapphire, which has not been cored out yet, it also registers as a gemstone. Maybe we should add a loop and turn this into an earring. The second method we'll use to verify gemstone status is with the Mohs scale of hardness. Plastic would scratch at a two or three, glass at a five or six, and sapphire would be a level eight or nine, just shy of a level 10 diamond. Sapphire is extremely scratch resistant. I've been testing sapphire for a while now, and Apple sapphire has consistently had marks below a level eight, which doesn't really jive with where the crystal is supposed to fall, but we'll see where today takes us. 
Starting with the cheapest of our three watches, the Samsung Galaxy Watch 5 at right around $300. That's a pretty cheap price point for something as premium as Sapphire, but we'll see what happens. This is the 44mm aluminum bodied watch, which obviously has fitness and sleep tracking, and if we flip it over we have the heart rate sensors and a water resistance of 5 atmospheres, which is right around 50 meters. And of course some Sapphire Crystal branding on the back. The correct verbiage for Sapphire is always going to be Sapphire Crystal, since the only attribute Sapphire shares with glass is that they are both clear. The ingredients, atomic structure, and thermal conductivity are all very different. And lucky for Samsung, the Galaxy Watch 5 indeed is Sapphire. It doesn't ping quite as high as the Tissot, but still registers. We'll head over to the scratch test to validate our findings since two tests are always better than one. We can see that the level 5 does not leave a mark. However, with level 6, I can feel and hear the tip of the pick start to catch on the surface of the sapphire. This could be an impurity thing, or it could also be the polish or texture of the watch face that's catching. The Mohs scale of hardness is a qualitative scale that ranks minerals on hardness and not necessarily used to generate precise comparisons between the different minerals on the same level. So while I do feel the pick catching, I don't visibly see any damage to the sapphire. I can also feel the level 7 pick catch, but we don't see any real damage until level 8. Nice work, Samsung. The Galaxy Watch 5 is using sapphire. Let's move over to the most expensive watch on the table, and the one I'm looking forward to the most, the Garmin Phoenix 7 Sapphire Solar, which currently sits at around $900. Now online this is advertised as having titanium but it's far too light in person to be made entirely from metal. The only titanium here is on the blue cap around the watch face. Everything white is made from plastic, which is fine, just different than I was anticipating. It's a very lightweight watch. The display is also very different from the Samsung. Instead of an AMOLED screen, the Garmin is using a transflective memory in pixel display, which is like a one bit per pixel LCD with basically a zero refresh rate. It's what allows us to get 22 days worth of battery life with the solar panels in the display instead of just 50 hours like we see on the Samsung. But that extra long battery life comes with an astronomical sacrifice in brightness. On the back it has more titanium with a water resistance rating of 100 meters, twice as much as the Samsung. But you know, if I ever find myself 100 meters underwater, something's really wrong. Good to know that my watch will still work though. Also on the back we have the Power Sapphire branding, which of course is the reason we're here. Pulling out the diamond tester tool. Remember, the lights are not an indicator of purity, just thermal conductivity. But the readings of the Garmin are off the charts when compared to the Samsung watch. Working our way up through the secondary verification, most scale of hardness, picks 6 and 7 both feel and sound smoother on Garmin Sapphire. And then level 8 is again where we start seeing major damage to the crystal. The Garmin Phoenix 7 is using real sapphire. Thumbs up for that. Came outside to check the solar intensity on the watch. And if we go right here we can see that it is indeed finding the sun and charging the batteries. And it keeps track of the solar illumination throughout the day which is pretty interesting. Now for the Apple Watch. This guy is a tad cheaper than the Garmin, sitting at around $800. A major downside to the Apple Watch is that it requires an iPhone to set up, which definitely limits who can use it. This is unfortunate, since the Apple Watch Ultra is probably the most feature-rich wearable on the planet, and probably the best piece of hardware that Apple has ever made. But I shouldn't have to downgrade my cell phone to upgrade my watch. It's a shame it's locked into their ecosystem. The Apple Watch Ultra is heavy and solid out of the box, having a full titanium body. Luckily my iPhone 14 still functions enough after the durability test to get the Ultra up and running. If this wasn't locked to an iPhone, I would probably totally be rocking it. It does have a Retina LCD display, which brings our battery life to 36 hours instead of 22 days like the Garmin watch. But we do get all that brightness back, which is pretty nice. On the back of the watch we get all the heart rate sensor stuff, as well as another 100 meter depth rating and some more sapphire crystal branding, which is what we're here to check on. The improved watch band looks very secure. One time my buddy Dan was cliff jumping into a lake and lost his Apple Watch for 9 months underwater. We eventually found it, and I fixed it. You should definitely check out that video if you haven't already. 
But yeah, this new watch band is definitely more secure than the previous versions. It's also... Real Sapphire. Three for three. Of course, we can double check with our most scale of hardness. Level five slides smoothly over the surface, but again, similar to the Galaxy Watch, the level six pick starts gripping, which you can audibly hear. There are some markings where the pick was moving on the surface, and you can again hear the grip of the level seven pick, and these markings are a tad more visible. And of course, our level eight pick is where the real damage begins. So it does look like Apple is still using the same sapphire that they've always been using. Samsung might have the same supplier, or it could be a polishing issue, but out of the three, the Garmin Sapphire feels to me most like the Tissot and like it'll hold up the best. Either way though, it's incredibly cool to see all three watches using such a premium material, a synthesized man-made technological marvel making its way onto the technology we use every day. The average person, of course, wouldn't be able to visually tell the difference between glass and sapphire, but since you're here watching my videos, you're already far superior to the average person. And we've now scientifically confirmed Sapphire's existence on each watch. Make sure your above average self hits that subscribe button if you haven't already. Coming out with me on Instagram, I'd say Twitter as well, but that's like offering a free seat on the Hindenburg. And by free, I meant $8. Don't forget about the massive discounts from Rhino Shield using the link in the description. And thanks a ton for watching. I'll see you around.